What's going on everybody? This is Rich with another video on gaming on a budget, a channel that tries to save you money by recommending free or cheap games with the hopes of recommending you guys some dope shit. So today will be the first Xbox games with gold review for 2021, which will be free for Xbox users. Again, I'm sorry for my non Xbox players, but I will provide links on where you can get the game, even though you will have to pay at least it's something. But the game is Little Nightmares. So it was announced not too long ago that Little Nightmares 2 would be out sometime this year. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to get into this game and actually, you know, learn more about it. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the facts. So the genre of the game is a puzzle platformer, horror adventure game uh, developed by Tarsier Studios, published by Bandai Namco Entertainment, created on the Unreal Engine 4, released back in 2017, Platforms you can play it on include Windows, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Google Stadia. So let's go ahead and talk about the story slash lore for the game. You play as a nine-year-old girl named Six in a yellow raincoat. She wakes up from a dream with this creepy woman who kind of looks like a geisha. With only a lighter, Six has to sneak around this underwater ship-like thing called the Ma. Quickly, you realize that the ship is meant for things that are way bigger than you. As she's sneaking around, you come across these little creatures known as gnomes, which are pretty harmless because they just run away from you when they see you. However, there's also these leeches that you come across that chase after you that can actually hurt you. And that's not even the worst of it. Later, you come across these monsters that literally look like what nightmares are made out of, and they're after you as well. With just a lighter, you must complete small puzzles and make your way through the ship, avoiding all the dangers you can. So I got a good feel for this game by putting some time into it, and through my play I've come up with some points to talk about, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get into them. So the first point, the visuals. So one of the first things you do in this game is adjust the brightness to calibrate the darkness in the game. I knew from that point that this game was going to get pretty creepy. Not too long after playing the game, I was right. The visuals in this game are great for the horror genre, dark and gloomy environment, being on a ship, you can sense the murkiness of the situation. In the environment, you also see some pretty scary things. For, for instance, a bunch of nooses are in the game, and that definitely did not put me at ease. Um, also, what appears to be large beings that were hung, also pretty scary. Um, eventually, you run into other children in the game who are pretty much prisoners and seem like they had their souls taken from them. And if that's not enough, wait until you see the monsters. Those things, man, I mean, <laughs> the first one you meet is blind and has these long ass creepy arms. Pretty fucking spooky if you ask me. But overall, the visuals in this game came together to give a great horror aesthetic and, and they absolutely nailed it on this one to me. Second point, the mechanics. In general, the mechanics are super simple. Basically, you move around, you can either walk or run, you can interact with things, you can crouch, so on and so forth. So regarding the mechanics, one thing I really appreciate was the subtlety and the preciseness of them. For instance, when Six walks or runs, it's how I picture a nine-year-old would. She isn't sprinting like a running back or anything, and it's what you would expect from someone a lot younger. Also, whenever Six has to interact with something, it's usually something a lot bigger than her. So you see her struggle to pick things up or throw things. Another cool thing I witnessed is that if Six is close enough to the wall, she will basically guide her hands along the wall, just like you would if you were in the dark and not sure of where you were going. Might not be a big deal, but small things like this really help with the immersion in the game, and, and I appreciate the hell out of it, so good job on that. So my next point, immersion. I found it super easy to get fully immersed in this game. I even cut off most of the lights in my apartment to get a full experience playing this game. Uh, I also found myself attached to Six, like I didn't want anything bad to happen to her. So whenever a monster would appear or was close, I literally was like quiet in the real world because I felt like it would affect her. For instance, there was a point in the game where Six gets hungry and she's like hurting. I, I felt so bad because I wasn't sure on like how to get her food, but randomly one of these prison kids throws her some bread or something and she, and she eats it and immediately feels a lot better. I was so happy for her in that moment, it's kind of ridiculous. I don't know how to explain it, but the developers did a great job of getting you emotionally involved with Six. As the game plays on, you care more and more about her well-being, and I think any game that does that deserves some credit. So let's talk about the highlights. So highlights for the game for Little Nightmares includes the visuals, 
as creepy as they are with the environment, the monsters, and everything, it really does add to the horror aspect of this game. Developers did a great job on this. Um, they absolutely just killed it. I mean, it was really a spooky and creepy game to play. And not in like the corny sense, at least to me. My next highlight, just the simplicity of the game. Um, literally just trying to make your way through the underwater vessel thing while trying not to be eaten by monsters is pretty interesting. With no way to really defend yourself, it's really, you know, using stealth and distractions and stuff. And that's just a really cool way to, to play the, a game like this. Final thoughts. I think Little Nightmares is a great game. Um, I love everything about this game. For someone that does not play horror games often, this is just a nice one to get into. Like I mentioned, visually it's a great game. Mechanics-wise, it's right on the money in my opinion. And if you're looking for a game where you actually feel like the main character... This is it. So if you're interested in getting Little Nightmares, it's free for Xbox Live subscribers until January 31st. So do not hesitate to get this if you don't own it already. But overall, Little Nightmares is a dope game. And I definitely think if you're a fan of horror and want something to play, you should check it out. But just like every game review, I want to know, what do y'all think? So how many of you guys have played Little Nightmares? Are you into horror games at all? Are you looking forward to Little Nightmares 2? Let me know and tell me all that in the comments. If you like this video, please go ahead and drop a like. And if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe. Videos on a weekly basis with game reviews, with my streamers you should follow, and also doing live streams as well. Also, if you know any games that I should play um, that you think I might enjoy that are free or cheap, again, I have to stress that, free or cheap, then please comment those in the bottom as well and I will do my best to get through them and post them up for you guys. Anyways, this is Rich with another review on Gaming on a Budget, and as always, I will see you on the next one.